Continuing on our discussion on diabetes and long-term complications, we're now going to look at macrovascular complications. Macrovascular complications. Now, when we talk about macrovascular complications, at the foundational level is atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis. How serious is atherosclerosis? I'll tell you, it's the number one killer in the United States of America today. Number one killer in the United States of America today. Before we define it, let's take a look at it. Here is a blood vessel. There shouldn't be anything on it. It should be clean. That's a full blood can go through. But look at all those little dots there. That represents plaque. That represents plaque, and that's what's dangerous. Okay. So, let's get some sort of definition here. Plaque or fat deposits attached to inside walls of the arterial blood vessels. Now, here you have it. And um, think of this. On the other side is a needy organ that needs blood, that needs the oxygen in the blood, that needs the glucose in the blood, and other factors it's going to need in the blood. The blood has to go from point A to point B. If that organ, whatever it be, a kidney, a brain, a heart, does not get the nutrition, it can die. It can die. Now, here we go. Two important problems that occur as a result of atherosclerosis are, one, impeded blood flow. The blood is not making it the way it should. Number two, atherosclerosis enhances chances of a blood clot from forming. Before, we talked about impeded flow with a blood clot, no flow, no flow. Certain death to the end organ over there. Okay, if we consider atherosclerosis, the tree, let us look at the branches of the tree. So we're going to go over here. The branches of the tree will be three. CAD, coronary artery disease, CDA, which is cerebral vascular accident, which is a stroke, or peripheral vascular disease, PVD. Okay, let's go back up here. When a person has coronary artery disease, they're at great risk for a myocardial infarction, heart attack. When a person has atherosclerosis, they're at great risk for a stroke. The blood, the, the blood vessels supplying the brain Filled with plaque, impeded flow, or a clot, stroke. PVD, peripheral vascular disease. We know that with diabetics, that diabetes is the number one cause of surgeons having to do amputations on the lower extremities. Peripheral vascular disease. When a patient has peripheral vascular disease, the oxygen and nutrients to the lower extremities is diminished. How do we know that they're experiencing peripheral vascular disease? A couple indicators would be diminished pedal pulses. You take the pulse, and all of a sudden, or you notice that it's not very strong. Not very strong. Well, diminished. The blood's not getting there. Not getting there very well. Also, one sign and symptom would be claudication. What is claudication? Well, you go for a walk, you start to feel some pain in the calf muscles or maybe in the buttocks. Hmm. Indicator, medication. Not a good sign. Not a good sign. Now, let us talk about atherosclerosis and what's unique in its relationship with diabetes. So we're going to go here. Here we are. The diabetic, if the sugar is not in control, not under control, and if the diabetic has consistently high blood sugar levels, the elevated blood sugar can wreak havoc on the endothelium of the blood vessel. The endothelium of the blood vessel is the inner lining that is very fragile. When that gets damaged, atherosclerosis can set in. So, elevated blood glucose levels. Also, another factor that can trigger endothelial damage is 
elevated insulin levels. And what we mean is more than what a non-diabetic would have. We know that a type 2 diabetic has problems with the insulin working due to the cellular resistance. So the pancreas secretes more insulin. In that case, with the more insulin load, endothelial death. Also, the type 1 diabetic gets exogenous from the outside insulin. Now, if the type 1 diabetic has to have more and more and more insulin, that extra load of insulin end up filial death. We know that a diabetic has a two to four fold increased risk for strokes or heart disease. In fact, 65% of the deaths in diabetes is related to heart disease and stroke. Atherosclerosis is not unique to the diabetic, but if a diabetic has these other problems, that will add to the effect. But let's look at some of the other factors that affect atherosclerosis. Hyperlipidemia. Well, remember the high cholesterol, lipids, cholesterol, fats? If you have a high cholesterol level, and most notably, low-density lipoproteins, LDL. High levels of LDLs wreak havoc on the endothelium. Very dangerous. Central obesity. What do you mean by central obesity? For us gentlemen, we've got to be careful that our waist doesn't go more than 40 inches. They've done studies. They found out that when your waist is at about 40 inches or greater, it tends to raise your cholesterol levels. Not good. Hypertension. Genetics. Sedentary lifestyle. What do you mean by sedentary lifestyle? Well, I think they use the term couch potato. Well, there you have it. Okay. What can we do to treat or offset or thwart or stop or reverse or stay away from atherosclerosis? There's two major arms to this. One is weight loss. Lose the weight. Two is exercise. Exercise. Exercise and weight loss are going to be great assets in stopping or preventing atherosclerosis. Let's see the reasons for it. When we lose weight, the, the insulin functions better. When we lose weight, the insulin functions better. The reuptake into the cells improves. Therefore, let's say we're a type 1 diabetic. We lose weight. We may find that we don't have to have as much exogenous insulin in our body. If that be the case, less endothelial damage. Now let's go to exercise. When we exercise, we know that it decreases cellular resistance. We know that um, insulin receptor sites on the cells increase, therefore we do not have to have so much circulating insulin. The pancreas doesn't have to secrete as much. With that in mind, less chance for endothelial damage, less chance for what? Arthrosclerosis. Developing. Also, smoking cessation. We know that one cigarette can cause vasoconstriction up to one hour. Nicotine in the cigarettes can cause vasoconstriction. We don't need that to already a problem with circulation. Let's go back now and just do a real quick summation. Diabetes, long-term complications. What we talked about here is macrovascular. What was at the heart of macrovascular complications? Atherosclerosis. The veins or arteries, excuse me, that look like this. What were the uh, fruit or what are the branches to the tree of atherosclerosis? What do we have it again? Coronary artery disease, stroke or cerebral vascular accidents, and peripheral vascular disease. Okay. There you have it, and our continual study of diabetes and long-term long-term complications. Thank you for listening.